Page 32, an old folk tune. The top of the page, they're giving you an idea about chord patterns. I wouldn't worry too much about them. You're going to see them a lot, and you'll get used to them, and you'll get used to how your hand is positioned to play them. I frankly don't see any point in trying to make an effort to memorize this chord pattern or that chord pattern. It'll happen. Let's talk about this tune here. It's pretty much three lines long. Treble bass clef, one sharp in the key signature, one in the key of G major. Make sure you can do the G major scale. Okay. Three four time signature, and we have a pickup beat. We're coming in on beat three. Well, the first two beats of the measure then are at the bottom. The last measure has a half note. That's beats one and two. And we have eighth notes and quarter notes, half notes, dotted half notes. We can do that. Right hand first. Let's make sure we have the notes and rhythms. You're starting here in the right hand. So three and one, three and one, two, three, one and two and three and one. Yeah. Get the idea? Really nothing. I mean, you're right in here as long as you got the notes and the rhythms. Yeah, makes sense, I guess. Left hand, we get the chords here. You got block chords to begin with. G chord. Then the next chord is D7. You'll get it eventually. Little, little finger comes down a half a step, and you're using the top two notes in the position. You get used to seeing this. You play them all at the same time. They can't put them directly under each other because they would overlap. They, there's not enough room. So they offset them a little, but they're touching. You play them at the same time. Or at least try to. Second line, the last two measures, now you do the broken chords. Okay, put the heads together. And then here. Just the one thing I want to caution you here is when you do this, don't lift up in the right hand just because you have to lift up in the left. See on these chords, I have to lift up to play them again. There's a little silence between them. Don't lift up in the right hand for that. For instance, the first full measure is here. Now you have to play the note again, so you have to lift up. But then going on, I'm going to connect that. Here, I have to lift up here. Don't lift up here. So I lift it up here, but not here. Hand. Don't go. Don't lift up in one hand because you did the other. Now once you have the notes and rhythms okay and you get rid of the hesitations and we think about the articulation. Well, it's, they don't give you any. Well, isn't that fun? It's up to you. What I would you put in the phrasing if you can figure out what the sentences are. The musical thoughts. I have to play the melody quickly so I can hear the thought. Now what I'm hearing is here. Lift up. It's a new thought. Now lift up. Lift up. Lift up. So I'm hearing the phrases. So I'm going to lift up for the phrases. In the left hand you can't do much with the block chords. You just play them. But when you get to the Broken chords, they're telling you to connect the first two. My tendency would be to connect this left hand through. all the way through. But you may be able to lift up in, in places depending on what the melody is doing. So in the last two measures of the second line you're here, sounds a little different than if I connect it. It's a different feeling, a different interpretation, a different... Hmm. So if you do, just do it the way the written is kind of nice, it, it kind of adds. You're 
lifting up with the right hand is all you're doing. Except the second measure, the last line you're connecting. You're going to lift up here because it's the end of a phrase. Why you don't lift up in the left hand? I don't know, but they didn't tell you. So if you want to connect that one measure, I guess that's what's written. Hmm? Now each of these eighth note pickups, like at the beginning, I would connect those. Don't go, don't, don't separate them, connect them, connect them. It's like the slur should go, include the eighth notes too. As far as dynamic goes, mezzo piano, medium soft, that's to the melody of the right hand. Whatever you think sort of soft is, in the second line you're moderately loud, you go up a Moderately saw the left hand's in the background. Now, I would suggest at the end of the first line here, put a little hairpin in there to get louder here. But go up to the moderately, don't just suddenly start moderately loud there, go up. Go to it. So like there you got a hairpin to come down. Well put a hairpin in the to the end of the first line to go up. Now, now speed automato, that quick fun thing. But it has to be accurate, so don't go faster than accurate. I tend to play some of those staccatos in places. They're not marked anything, but if I feel it, I do it. That's interpreting the music. Let's play this together very slowly and double check the notes and the rhythms. I'm not going to do any dynamics. I'll play both hands about the same. But I want to check the notes and the rhythms. I will do the staccato or the, yeah, the phrasing and stuff. So I'll give us two counts because we come in on beat three. Ready and go and three and one. 